Welcome back, everyone, to the smartest year ever, our quest to become the world's greatest conversationalist. My name is Gordy, and I was just wondering, does this look like a normal upside-down picture to you? Well, what about now? <laughs> Give me five minutes. I bet you can work this into a conversation today. But first, like and subscribe so you can keep up. I do this every single day. In 1980, British psychologist Peter Thompson was researching face perception using a picture of Margaret Thatcher. And he took a photo of her, he turned it upside down, and he flipped her eyes and mouth back upright. And when the whole image was upside down, she looked perfectly normal. And then when you rotate it right side up, suddenly the Iron Lady looks like she grew up in the sewers. <laughs> This became known as the Thatcher effect or the Thatcher illusion. It's one of psychology's favorite party tricks because it shows how your brain is deeply specialized for upright faces and not much else. When you look at a normal upright face, your brain's fusiform face area or FFA, it kicks in. Uh, processing the spatial relationship between features, which uh, this is something called researchers call configural processing. Uh, so the fusiform face area is a specialized region of the brain located in the fusiform gyrus, and it plays a crucial role in facial recognition. And it's so dedicated to this task that damage to it can cause prosopagnosia, which is a face blindness. And perhaps unsurprisingly, people with face blindness don't experience the Thatcher effect to the same degree or sometimes at all. With an active FFA, you're not simply looking at at eyes and nose and a mouth, you're reading the whole arrangement as one integrated pattern. And that's why you can spot something off about a face in milliseconds. And this actually reminds me a bit of my Uncanny Valley video or episode that I did on June 8th, 2025. So check out that if you want to learn about the Uncanny Valley. But when you flip the whole head upside down and your brain switches from integrated processing to object processing, the fine-tuned configural machinery largely shuts down. Like you can still tell it's a face, but the inverted eyes and mouth barely register as wrong because you're just processing parts, not the whole anymore. So you may ask, why would evolution bother wiring us this way? Uh, well, obviously faces are, are social gold, like recognizing who's in your group, spotting emotional cues, detecting threats, they all hinge on rapid, accurate face reading. In primates, including humans, upright faces are overwhelmingly what we see, so our brains evolved to prioritize that kind of orientation, which makes me wonder if vampires can spot how goofy these upside down pictures look, since, you know, they, do they hang upside down? <laughs> the Thatcher effect also works across cultures uh, and with unfamiliar faces. So it's not just about knowing or recognizing who Margaret Thatcher is. It's about how your neural software handles faces in general. Um, as mentioned, as I mentioned, primates show a weaker version, suggesting that the roots do go way back in our evolutionary history to some shared ancestor. And beyond the Thatcher effects, utility um, and fun illusions, <laughs> memes, and uh, research on um, face blindness. It also plays a role in understanding developmental psychology and, and even testing AI facial recognition. In all these cases, it's a reminder that perception really isn't just a passive feed, like some kind of passive camera feed. It's a fast, efficient, shortcut, riddled system that can miss the obvious if the scene isn't exactly what it's expecting. So there you have it. A photograph that can make your brain shrug off the grotesque simply because it's upside down. It's not that you can't see it. It's that your brain quite literally isn't looking at it the right way. Go check out my sources, which can be found in the YouTube description. Leave me a comment. Rate, like, subscribe. Share this with someone who likes this sort of thing. I'd really appreciate that. Go check out my short version that I do of all of these. You can find those everywhere on social media, at Smartest Year Ever. And in the meantime, stay curious and stay clever on our quest to become the world's greatest conversationalist. I'll see you tomorrow in the smartest year ever.